Okay, next up, uh, we have one more session before the break. Uh, I would like to welcome a panel to the floor podium. <laughs> we will have a panel talking about open data and responsible recreation. Um, we've got our moderator, TJ Broom. You could come on up to the, I don't know, the panel table. <laughs> um, Hit Groove from All Trail, come on up. Brian Morden with Onyx Maps. Elizabeth McCartney with USGS and Carrie Shikarjan with National Park Service. Um, this year we have a little bit of a, a deeper dive into the role of open data and recreation spaces. You probably noticed that it says great outdoors, so many of our talks will be focusing on this and um, we look forward to the conversation. So let's give them a warm welcome. Hello everyone. I think we've got a great panel for you today to talk about open data, trails, and responsible recreation. So we're just going to start off and have the panel members introduce themselves and where their organization sits with trail data and this topic. So we'll, we'll start at the other end of the table. So Elizabeth, if you want, yeah, and we'll kind of work our way this way. I sat here on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I'm Elizabeth McCartney. I work at the U.S. Geological Survey, and um, my project is the National Digital Trails Project, and we are basically trail aggregators, so we don't create trail data, but we pull in um, official trail data from our partners and federal agencies and state organizations, and so um, we're looking at OpenStreetMap to see where we can fill some of those gaps in, in some of our different databases. Awesome. I'm Pitt Gruy. I'm the head of public lands program at All Trails. Uh, the public lands program, you can learn more about tomorrow. We have a, a breakout session, but essentially we are working with land managers and trail managers uh, to make sure that the information on All Trails is the most up-to-date as trail, trails change and evolve and that safety information and responsible recreation information is reaching our 65 million users of our app. Uh, and, and then also sharing trail usage data with them so that they can use it for their further planning, uh, advocation, advocation work and, and, and advocacy work and uh, as well as deploying resources. Um, I will add prior, I, I, this is a new program for All Trails, so I've been there about a year and a half. Prior to that, I, I worked for the state of Utah in the Division of Outdoor Recreation where we were always working to find better data on usage as well as uh, trail data to help make you know, large statewide recreation plans, deploying resources with our grant funds and our, and our appropriations from the legislature. And so um, it's great to be here to, to hear all the great ideas and, and kind of this brain trust to help move the responsible recreation and recreation planning ahead, especially here in Utah. So thanks for having me. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Shikarjan. I work for the National Park Service based out of Anchorage, Alaska. Um, I'm a data manager for the Alaska region and GIS data manager, I guess I should say. And I also work on uh, data standards at the national level for the Park Service. So our data rolls up from parks and then it goes up into national and then it goes out to the public. So we do have national public data sets and I'm here as a first timer absorbing and learning and as much as I can about OpenStreetMap. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, my name is Brian Riordan. I'm with Onyx Maps. I'm the current senior director of content. Uh, that's more or less means I run the mapping department. Um, first off, thank you to Utah for hosting us and um, thank you to this panel to be up here with such awesome people. It's really cool and thank you for taking the time. And Maggie for bringing us all together. This is fantastic. Um, it kind of reminded me that the first time I went to an OpenStreetMap conference was uh, 2013 in San Francisco, and it's pretty new to the environment, really. Um, we were trying to figure out how to find a global bike head source to kind of do something very similar to what Pitt was doing, but with Strava data, right? Um, the, the birth of Strava Metro at the time, and Paul Mock, and Heat Map Labs, and all that kind of stuff. And it's amazing to see where this community has grown over that time, and it's really neat to be focused solely on trails, which is really my new passion and spot where I'm really excited to be as, as Onyx 
comes and like synthesizes all this data to provide that most authoritative moment for Venture to be outside, to do the right thing. We find over and over again that our, our community just, they want the data, they want to know when it is, they want to be good stewards, but they miss the moment at times. And missing that moment means they do the wrong thing. They potentially go across the trail that's closed. They work, trespass on private land. But when we're able to bring that data together through good stewardship, through good process and good um, policy, we're able to like move mountains. And I'm just glad to be here and to talk about moving mountains and building new trails and building new connections with everybody here. Awesome. Yeah, and then um, I'm TJ Broom. I work for the U.S. Forest Service. I am a recreation and trail planner and operations person by trade. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of bringing that perspective. I represent the Forest Service or one of the people on the OSM U.S. Trails Working Group for about the last three years. And so, yeah, just excited to have this conversation. We've got a little less than an hour to go into a few topics. Um, I could talk to you guys all day, two days, the whole conference, but, um, but there's a number of sessions that will follow up on these topics. So yeah, look for those. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about some of the challenges, some of the successes we're having, and, uh, and some of the opportunities, and then a little time for questions for the audience, hopefully at the end. But we are running a little behind time, I think, at this point. So we'll start out. Um, so, you know, from your organization's perspective, a lot of you are aggregating trail data and representing big trail systems, um, you know, for the whole country, sometimes the world. And so we want to talk about what are the challenges that your org has had or you're seeing others have within that um, so that you can serve that data up to people so they can have amazing recreation experiences while being safe, practicing good leave no trace. Um, and then I'll, I don't know, we'll kind of, maybe we'll bounce back and forth between private and, and government folks, so. Yeah. Government first. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, so at the USGS, we are, we are an aggregator of trails, um, similar to some of our friends on the panel here. And we're pulling in data from a lot of different sources. And some of the challenges are, um, well, right now, um, we have US Topo Maps I'm, and uh, Topo Builder. There are ways for people to create and download maps. And so we, we do want to have the most accurate and um, and authoritative, we've talked about authoritative um, data on our maps, and so we do pull in um, our trail data from our federal agencies, but we're also looking for state data and for data from counties and cities, and so that's one of the biggest challenges we have because everything is coming in in, a different, in different formats and different schemas and different attributes, and with OSM, the, tag, the tagging system is something I'm slightly aware of and you know so there's a lot of differences there and so trying to to pull in information um, that is in a consistent format that's one of our biggest challenges another big challenge is do to have uh, state coverage so there are we have trails from 36 different states and but only 14 of those states are aggregating on that state level so that means we have multiple sources in the other states and then some states there's no trails at all so we're, we're looking at trying to expand what we're trying to do and to see where OpenStreetMap and the excellent work that you are doing on the trail, on that trail data layer, and how that we can kind of incorporate that into some of our work in the future. Y you know, in a, joking, in a joking way a little bit, I'm sure many of you have seen an All Trails meme or a social media post about All Trails that said, you know, Thanks, all trails, for the three-mile hike. Mile seven was my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you think about, all right, <laughs> how do we make sure that's accurate and we have a good experience, or these people have a great experience out there, as well as stay safe, right? I think that's, that's also key. The more information we can put into the hands of trail users to prepare them and to help them you know, know what to expect and prepare, then you know, the better experience they have which then ultimately turns them into stewards of these places that they're visiting. And that's the goal, right? We want them to protect them. We want them to, to, to respect them and, and, and keep our access to our public lands for everybody uh, always so people can go out and, and enjoy them. And so, you know, obviously working, working with OSM, working with, with communities like yours that uh, you know, are, are constantly updating and, and improving this data um, makes a difference. And we notice that in the areas where there's strong, where there is a strong community base doing that. You know, we have trails all over the world, 
and not all of the data is equal. Uh, that, that is, we have, you know, it's, it's much easier with, for example, the park service, right, and those, in within those boundaries. A lot of times that information's quite accurate and, 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 and we can share that and translate that out to the, to the public in, in an accurate way. But there's other areas that uh, it's, it's much harder to, to make sure that that's the, the most accurate data. And so hopefully, you know, as, as we continue to work with land managers, continue to work with organizations, the nonprofit organizations, volunteers, however it, however it works out, we want to make sure that that information reaching the public and the people recreating, uh, you know, provides the best possible experience for them while they're out on the trail. National Park Service, trail data. So we may have good data in some places, but we don't have good data in all places. And those places we don't have good data, we may not have geospatial people available to actually collect that data because they, they can't have that position at the park. And that's where trying to update those things takes a little bit longer, so you might see a time lag. But we do rotate out our data nightly. So if something does make it to the national level, you'll see it instantly the next day. But trying to make that efficient is tricky when we don't have people on the ground able to do that. And we're a, a bottom up. We go from the parks up to national. It's not a national down to the parks. So we rely on the parks to provide us that data. And it's a challenge. And you know maybe that's where OpenStreetMap comes in or some other collaboration to make it more efficient for all of us to have the same data for apps or USGS to bring into their maps and their trail recreation. And so that's kind of why I'm here, to make things more efficient. I'm a standardizer, and if I can you know, make things efficient, that's, that's my goal. I, th I think there's a, a few big words that just buzz out for me when I think about challenges, right? Like, you know, uniformity. How many of us have grabbed five different sources from five different states and realized that, wow, these are five completely different schemas for the same exact thing? Now let's multiply that by all 3,000 counties, 3,000 plus counties, and then towns, and you have a lot of unique schemas out there, right? And then attribution. Like, what is attribution is really unique and differentiating. What does OpenStreetMap strongly have across the board that we should all believe in and have in, in this, that is the authoritative source? But ratings, trail ratings, difficulty? That's different, depending upon the person. It would be hard for one entity to be like, this is the authoritative. Go ski a black diamond in Vermont, go ski a black diamond in BC. Case in point, right? They're different, they have the same ratings. Um, timeliness, how fast can things be updated? How authentic, like, uh, and just when can we get that point of, point of, point of data? And then scale, how do we be able to scale this? Um, at, at Onyx, we blend thousands of sources together, right? We take OpenStreetMap to help us with like, urban navigation, we take the universe, um, Boulder County data to understand trails, we look for trail heads across the board. It's all about trying to blend data, create transformation engines and bring more together to create that sense of completeness so that the customer has everything at their fingertips when they're completely offline in the middle of the Brooks Range, for example, to something of that nature. But then I think perhaps the last piece is that easy to use, right? And this is where I think the private industry really starts to come forward that we build these apps that are tailored for our use, a moment, right? Whether this is hunting, off-roading, backpacking, rock climbing, it doesn't really matter, but we're just building these authentic, because everyone just can't jump into OpenStreetMap.org and see the map and have that moment of intelligence or need that they need at that exact second. So I think there's one, but some of just a few of the challenges that the private industry just comes to grip, grip with every day is we just look for sources, we try to bring them together, we try to resolve the problems that occur from all those in some kind of realistic and automatic way. Great, and then just share for a service perspective how we ended up in this work group. And um, you know, we're pretty focused on our own data, and we're, we put it out there, but we're fairly siloed. And then we've realized that a lot of applications are using OpenStreetMap data. That's what was in the background. Um, we see effects on the ground, our, our staff that's out there on the ground interacting with the public, maintaining the trails. Um, and then, you know, we kind of like, why aren't people just using our authoritative data and all these things and just saying exactly what we want? And I think we've learned a lot of the nuance and reasons for that. And then this collaboration with OpenStreetMap really opens that up. Trail systems are 
they span ownerships. They are around communities. They're not like no one, for the most part, thinks like, oh, I'm going to go to a Forest Service trail today. And so that ability to have applications that are serving up information tailored to people, the experience they're looking for across ownerships, I mean, I think that that's then what we can kind of work on in this work group. That's why we spent a lot of time in it. All right, so yeah. So with that, um, I think there's a, a lot of successes that have happened um, you know, at the table here um, in a, a bunch of different ways. I wanna talk about that kind of cons current successes of the ability for us all to deliver that trail data and that information behind it in a way that really does enable the public that's out there recreating to have great experiences, to choose things that are right for them, to kind of keep them safe, um, to enable them to make good choices that have less impact on the landscape. So uh, yeah, I think we'll go back across this way, if, we, if you don't mind, uh, put you back on the spot right away. And, uh, Great, sounds good, thanks CJ. Um, I think y we would all be remiss up here if we didn't talk about the biggest success, which is this room, right? This community, the OpenStreetMap mappers, everyone out there helping us build this, the best map in the, in, on the planet right now, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, you guys can clap for that because it is all you. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I, you, you know, I, I think on top of that, it, it is government policy. Um, Onyx is very involved in government policy right now with um, some sure of you have seen some of our corner block um, work that we've done to bring, the exp to bring awareness to what's happening on our land um, and provide data to stimulate conversations around um, things like access, um, easements, corner block. Um, in particular, also we've been working with the uh, Teddy Roosevelt Conservation Partnership on the uh, the Map Land Act and the Map Water Act, and most likely to be the Map Ocean Act, if you find the trend and follow it. Um, and um, it's looking quite likely that the Map Water Act has found, got traction and we'll get through to create those <coughs> standards across at least our federal partners, um, as challenging as they can be at times, of course, right? Um, with policy must come funding or else we won't be able to get what we need across um, the board as well. But TJ, you brought up an interesting point just a second ago where you said, no one goes and says, I wanna go hike a US Forest Service land today, trail today. And you're right. <laughs> I've never heard someone say, I can't wait to go hike a National Park Service trail. They wanna go hike a region, a moment. They wanna have an experience. They wanna be on an adventure. I think that's something to really anchor in on is that we're, we're building something to collectively for people to go do regardless of our app, regardless of our department of division or where we stand within a, within a government. It's, uh, it's about building this, this database for opportunity for people. And that is a real empowerment that we've been given. Um, and it's something that really gets me to work every day. I would add, add on to that. I mean, the acts that come down or, you know, some of the interagency working groups that I've been on to try to be more efficient between agencies for these acts so that, you know, everybody's using the same schemas and there's one source to go to potentially in the future. Maybe there's just one single trail place that you go. I mean, maybe it is OpenStreetMap, I don't know. Or, or maybe it's an authoritative, <laughs> you know, source that gets sucked into OpenStreetMap, I don't know. but. You know, it doesn't have to be all these different silos. Maybe the dream is like one big trail database. But I think we're in the s beginning stages. I mean, here we are right now and having, you know, coming from a government standpoint, having interagency discussions where we're actually making progress and now we know who all the players are, which takes time to figure that out because not all the right players are at the table in the beginning. I think we're making really big strides, um, and I think that's a huge accomplishment and, you know, more to come. I hope to see a lot more of it in the future, and it's, it's fun to be a part of and to get all the different perspectives and, and just align. So. Yeah, in my, in my job, I, I talk to land managers, <coughs> sorry, land managers across North America every day in this uh, dream of a central database where everything is accurate, right? Like that's the, you know, you see, you see the, yeah, you see the like popping heart, like heart emojis coming off their head when you, if you know, you talk about it. But we're not there, obviously, um, and, and how can we get there? I think it, talking about these silos and, and everything else, I, you know, it, also me, uh, you know, I, I love 
land management agencies and kind of nerding out on that. So I was at, I was actually at an event earlier this week with some of the execs from All Trails, and uh, we were in California and we went on this great hike. And my first question, as soon as we got out of the car at Trail, I was like, "All right, like whose land are we on? What is this? Is this state parks? Is this like Forest Service?" And you know, all the execs look at me like, "I." don't know and why would you care you know and uh you know i i wanted to know just because it's fascinating to see where all this data comes together into uh and, and then how that reaches the public so with that being said where i think there's opportunities to break down these silos and these barriers right are uh, companies like all trails like onyx you know there's many people that are providing data to the public in a way that's easy for them to consume. And because of that, we collect a lot of data on where people are going and how they're using those trails. So how can we integrate, and this is part of the public lands program, and you know, we, you know, Strava has done this with Metro, which Brian mentioned, you know, other companies are doing this. How can we then take that usage data to help continually, in an, e in an easy way, refine where people are, what trails are being used, how they're being used, um, regardless of who the land management agency is, right? Like that's that's the dream. If we can figure out a a, a very good flow of that, you know, that that circular data, like reaching the public and then what they're doing with it, coming back, and how that continues to refine this database, this dreamland of database. Uh, uh, and I think we can get there. I, I really do, uh, but you know, it, it it takes this whole community. It takes the private sector. It takes the public sector. It, it it's going to take a lot of partnerships to make that happen. Thanks. Hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I agree with with um, everything that's being said, and um, some of the work that Carrie has talked about and also when Brian talks about the, the Mapland Act and those groups coming together to try to standardize um, schemas and the words that we use to describe attributes about trails when we're talking about trail you know, width and, and surface type. And there's a lot of things that are really important to the agencies who maintain trails. And so all of that information, it's, it, it would amaze you, maybe not, because you know it's the government, but um, <laughs> it takes a long time to come to agreement. And when Carrie talked about having the right people in the room, I think that that's one of the biggest successes that we're having right now. And for um, working with her as she worked with the Federal Trail Data Standard to come up with the Federal Trail GIS schema, so that's, so we're all speaking the same language with the different federal agencies, and that took years. But those same people, because we knew the people in the room, once the Mapland Act, which it's too much to go into right now, but that's also about standardizing how we talk about data and how we talk about schemas, came along, we knew a lot of the right people to call into the room. And so that process seems to be going along much more smoothly because of the groundwork that was initially laid down. The other thing is um, with OpenStreetMaps, the trail working group and their federal group, I, I, don't, I don't have all the working group names down exact, <laughs> Maggie, but we're, we're part of, of that. And then having the right people in the room. So, you know, we have Onyx in the room, and we have All Trails in the room, and we have OpenStreetMap in the room, and we have federal agencies and public agencies and organizations in the room. So, and, and, as, and some of those conversations are a little difficult, as you can imagine, but I think that we've made a lot of progress in moving forward, and to me, I think that's one of the biggest things that has been, you know, one of our biggest successes so far, just as a group is being able to get together and looking for ways where we can collaborate. Yeah, and I just want to tag on to that, because I think, yeah, the, um, to plug the OpenStreetMap US um, Trail Stewardship Initiative and the work group, um, I think that that's been a really big success. And, you know, that work group kind of came out of looking at being able to distinguish syst official system trails from non-system trails and looking at the tagging schema behind. And that was really um, 
OSM mappers and OSM US uh, getting together with all different kinds of agencies, the app companies like Fed, state, local, land trust, people pop in and out of that work group, but, um, and then really seeing some outcomes of people updating their vector base map styles of uh, de-emphasizing non-system trails and really emphasizing system ones. So I think that that's been a real success with the OSM community driving that, that really kind of um, goes through all, a lot of the app systems you know, for like the whole country kind of all at once. And so refining those systems with OSM US of like how to do that. Um, yeah, so to me, that's just been a big success. There's other sessions about it. Um, yeah, you should follow up on those ones uh, this weekend. And so, um, but I did just wanna, I think that's been a big success with the OSM community. Oh, you, ha you want? Okay. <laughs> we, we could pop, we're, I think we're doing okay on time. We could pop, okay. Okay, so with that, let's talk about kind of some future opportunities. Um, so, you know, we talked about some of the challenges, and we can always go back there, because maybe it's solving some of those. Um, you know, we've talked about some of the successes we're having currently. So, where's your thoughts on, you know, what's kind of next, what we should be working on all together in order to solve some of those challenges? Again, to have the, recreating trail users out there have better, more consistent, more complete data, both like line work, but also allowed uses um, so they can make good choices of what they're able to do. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, any kind of thoughts? And maybe we'll start in the middle of the table now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> one, one of you can choose the mic. Okay, so one of the things I think about is I mean, I was at the intro session yesterday and I was asking, you know, what's the import like? What's the export like? So how do we get that information that might be collected out there? Maybe it's in another app, maybe it's in OSM, into our national data sets at the park service. Because if it's not there, then it's, it's gonna be absent and it would be really nice to be able to pull that stuff in for our data sets as well, and making that efficient somehow would be a, a really nice thing. And um, yeah, because <laughs> like I said, our data rolls from the parks up, so if, there, if it, the data is coming in from some other way and it's not coming from the park, we are not going to get it, and it's not going to be in our national data set. So that's an issue, and it, yeah, so that would be something, a challenge to work on, um, which takes time, discussion, that's why I'm here to learn, <laughs> um, so yeah. I don't know about all you, but I still see hearts coming out of Pitt's head at this moment, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Um, no, that was, Kara, that's a great point. I, 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 call, I, think, I look at it as like data fluidity, right? A little bit of like OpenStreetMap, in the, you know, at least in its inception when it imported Tiger for the US many, many years ago, it was like, a, it was a one-way door. Data went in, great. But I couldn't re-import Tiger next year, right? And that was a, that was a, that was a block. So, but in hearing the, the, the Utah initiative with Trailheads, like that's different. Fluidity of data, moving back and forth, updating, potentially even updating here to update here, to update here, to update there, that's fascinating, right? Because we can start to create unique identifiers that we can share across databases and scheme. And then it allows us in the private industry to focus on the differentiation and the experience, not the moment that there is a single trail here. Because I guarantee if we line up some of OpenStreetMap trails with Onyx trails, with all trails, they're all gonna be different. And they're all gonna have a slightly different alignment at times, right? Because we've been doing different things different moments. Um, I think then that then dovetails to grow community, right? There's eight people from Monix here um, because they love mapping. They love it, they're passionate about it. This, can, this room should be 500 people in five years, right? As we continue to grow and evangelize for what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which turns right directly into comms, standardization, structure. Are we speaking the same language? Are we using the right terms, right? Are we actually saying the same kind of mapping voice, because um, without the right same mapping voice, we'll be talking in circles around each other, and not in a good way. Um, and um, 
I'm going to toss out the dangerous word, but I don't, and I'd be curious to challenge people of where we go with this. But what, what does AI play in OpenStreetMap, right? Um, what should we be thinking about? What should we not be thinking about? Um, and just making sure that we're having those harder conversations about what it means for our profession and then for our maps. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> um, I think I, what I would like to see going forward for us, um, filling in some of those gaps and, and seeing how OpenStreetMap can help fulfill that role. But the other thing is, is I'd like to see a good understanding of some of the, the standards and schema definitions that are coming out of the Maplin Act um, and seeing how that can be applied and maybe utilized um, in some way um, by the OpenStreetMap community. So that helps us get on that same page. So I think that we would need to have some conversations on on how, you know, if we've had this many um, agencies come together to agree on, you know, standardizing that terminology and attributes and schemas, um, that's something that really needs to be, to be shared out and understood because that will help with the sharing. One of our other, you know, so some of the challenges are, are having um, trails that are more proprietary that we can't show on our maps and maybe getting to some, into some discussions about perhaps making you know the name and the line work available. Um, not all of the value added attributes that make it more valuable to, to some of our partners here. So they, we could say, okay, this is a line we agree on, this is the name we agree on. Okay, everything else is what I'm going to do special for my, you know, the people who are using my maps, and my apps, um, um, to make the moments that you were talking about, Brian, and um, you know, knowing where to go. Um, with all trails, you know, just pop it up, see if there's any, I've used that traveling, you know, across the country, you know, you need to stop and take a break, so it's quick. Um, so, off to you. <coughs> As everybody was talking, I was like, oh, that's a great point, I wanna talk about that. Well, that's a great point, I wanna talk about that. Cause now the mic's in my hand, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, um, it's hard, right, it, I, I think, Brian made some great points, right? Like, if we could focus our attention fully on the experience that our users are having and improving that versus the constant, I don't want to call it a battle, but the const constant maintenance of accuracy of the data, um, great. Like, we'd love to do that. You know, our product team would love to do that and, and, and everything else. But that's hard in the sense that, you know, we've, we've talked to the park service where we want to get that feedback loop going. But, you know, we're a, we're a private business that, you know, sharing some of that data could threaten the, you know, competition or our competition or help our competition and things like that. So that's a tough discussion to have with the people that are worried about making sure we're around in five years as, as a business. And so, um, yeah, w where that solution lies, I don't know. But the, you know, there are small steps that I think we can learn from other industries, not just the, I'm, and I'm just talking specifically about the trail world, but you when know, we look at all the other platforms that are using OSM data um, and the private businesses that are using that, right? they're giving back information or giving back data that, that helps refine OSM, but you know, isn't threatening their business model, right? And I think one of those steps is, yeah, you know, our, the tags that we use in trail data, right? How do we refine that? How do we improve that? Whether it's around you know, what type of trail it is, or whether it's around the, the user group of, of trail, or the, you know, I don't know, regulations, rules, I, I, I don't know what that looks like. How do we continue to refine these tags and, and, and make sure that data going back? Because that, that's helpful for everybody, including the businesses and the users and, and everything else, right? So that might be the first steps to this, uh, that the private companies, uh, like All Trails, like Onyx, you know, could, could continue to work on and, 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 and give back to. And then I think, uh, you know, like I said, had all these great thoughts as people were talking, 
now I'm talking in circles. But uh, honestly, it, it, is, it is that full circle of, of where you know, the, the data that we collect on the usage and the patterns that we can see. I don't think anybody has yet figured out how to catalyze all that and use it for what the potential power really is there. And when I, when I say potential power, right, if somehow we can, we can do that, there, in the future, there could be more funding for our land management agencies to do so much more because we are using on the ground user data to advocate, to get more resources, to help you know, refine th not only this process, but infrastructure on the ground and, and everything else, right? And, you know, there's obviously groups out there that are lobbying for that and whatever, but I don't think anybody's tapped into the real potential of this usage data to move the needle. And this could be at federal level, this is local level, this is state level, and this is me coming from my experience working with the state, right? I had to go and always talk to the legislature, like, we need more money for these infrastructure projects. And if I had hard data in my hands that I could easily access and collect on what's happening on the ground uh, from these users, that then you could you could start to move that. So, um, and then that's maybe where these solutions come from because we we have a movement there, um, but it, it takes that cooperation um, to do all that. So. Okay, well, we're doing pretty good on time. So um, I thought maybe just extend this conversation. And, you know, in one of our early get-togethers, we did talk about that um, on the private side, there's a need to differentiate yourselves. And, you know, and you have a customer base that you're going after. And, you know, each app is a little different, but you might have overlaps in customers. And then, you know, with that, though, um, the OSM data as free for use, like, kind of what's that base set of data that's like public domain, shared, that we should all be contributing to make sure that it's what's accurate, um, you know, and that we're all sharing that. And then, you know, then there's that other set that then is that add-on that's like your own kind of proprietary that's looking for your, what you're offering that's unique. Um, and, you know, like obviously line work, like is, you know, if we all had the same line work for the official trails, like that'd be great. Um, but, it, you know, is there, more there that we should be thinking about. Um, and, uh, you know, an OSM potentially has the tagging and data schema to all share that. Um, yeah, any kind of thoughts there from, did that even really make sense what I was kind of getting at? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> Good because we have some time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where to start on this one? Um, all right, so DODBL. Right, so there's a share alike clause. We have, which is probably something that, at Onyx, we spend a exorbitant amount of time walking through, thinking about. It's grays, it's not grays, it's what is it? Like, who on the OpenStreetMap committee is the, the authoritative? Like, can I go talk to you and you tell me explicitly, yes, this is good or not? Because I would love that person. So raise your hand if you're that person. Hmm, I need that person. Because um, we instead we we all we all go to our legal, and our legal helps us discern what is ODBL right and what is not ODBL. What is a tag structure, when should we use it, when should we not? How far down the nuance can we break it down before it becomes shared, shared back, shared back, right? Um, and it is a constant debate that we have internally about what it is. At this point, we are playing way conservative with it, right? Because it's just the right thing to do. We wanna respect this community because we're part of this community. Um, but yes, there are moments where our users require a certain level of auth authenticity that they need, and that is what we then go after. And I believe that, you know, when I when I when I talk to the team, and I say like, well, there's there's just one line, there's one trail there, right? We need one reflection of that trail, the trail of truth, right? And we should own that trail. At some point, I strongly strongly believe that there will the, all of the lines will be mapped, the names will most likely all be there as well. After that, it gets, in my opinion, can be different. It can change pretty quickly with what is important to you for what you want to accomplish at that given moment for your different community, for what your different needs. So I think I go from there and I go to kind of like, I go to some all trail stuff right, and I'll go to some of our guided routes things as well and with Onyx Off-Road where, uh, you know, we have these people give our trail review and they're like, oh man, 
that, that this was an easy hike, and it took me you know, four hours. I drank two water bottles, had four goos, and it was great. And then I'm like, that was Half Dome, and you just ran a marathon the day before, and I have two kids with me, and I eat ice cream. <laughs> like, I need a different review, like, you know? And then I go to Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, that's the same movie, and it's 285 reviews. Like, so at some point, there, it becomes like, who is valuable for me to read about? What is valuable for me to know about, about the same piece of linear geometry? And that's where things change. The line is still the same, us as mappers, the trailhead is there, the vista points here, but information about that for my experience, for where I am, is critical to my user case and my, and my and being authentic to my community. And when, from an app side of the life, like being authentic is vital. That's what we want. Like who wants an unauthentic app, right? You're passionate about your mapping, you're passionate about your bird watching. They both need to be really good. I'm not sure I'm ready either. <laughs> yes, I'm also really touched by what you just said. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, where to begin with that? Um, I mean, you even asked kind of when you were just talking. I mean, we have, you know, we have our national data sets and they're pretty much bare bones. And, you know, we say at the, at any level, you know, I'm, I'm at the standardization world, you can add whatever you want onto that. And I think that's a little bit of what we're talking about here is, you know, let's say your apps are grabbing National Park Service data, but you need to add on for your specific needs. And, and that's totally doable with how we currently have things standardized, but maybe what we have is not exactly, like you have to actually get the information yourselves for whatever it is, because our data set doesn't provide that. So that's a huge lift, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure where else to take this. I Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Brian said it very well, so way to go, Brian. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> so, but what, what TJ was saying, you know, what TJ was saying is, you know, we we do all agree it would be nice. And you know, you were talking about the perfect world and in Dreamland, where you you know you have one database to go to, you know, and we do have a, a nationwide trails database, but it it's certainly not complete when you look at the trails that are out there because of the data sources. So. You know, a, a, a trail, a line work, and a name, and that's that's our basic. So we are at basic right now. We like to have more information about trails, but we are at basic. And then also one of our, and what Brian was saying about the licensing, it really is an issue for us. So we're an agency that has all of our trails are in the public domain. So that means anybody can take them, they can do whatever they want, they can put their name on them. And I really understand the importance of the ODBL licensing, licensing because of the work that you're putting into it and you want to make sure that that data stays in a place where anybody would have access to it. And so what happens sometimes with public domain data, it does get pulled into something and then it's really not use, it may not be usable to everyone. So I, I to me that was a like a big oh aha moment and I know I've been around this for a while but it just really got I've really um, understood that and so it is understandable but um, it's still um, something that we do have to deal with and and learn how to 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 work with so that's one of our kind of our challenges but still having that one single place where everybody goes for trail data I think makes a lot of sense yeah, well, thanks for that, everyone. And I think about this a lot, and um, you know, I think allowed uses we're interested in and came to the table, want people to know what those are. But, um, but I think the interesting space is like, hey, what are those things that can um, extend stewardship of everybody? And you know, um, Pitt, you were kind of talking about some of those things. Like, what is that data that is, 
I know it's proprietary, but if we all used it in a way that had great outcomes for the landscape, let people practice better, leave no trace, make better choices, you know, would we then all be kind of contributing to that stewardship, you know, while respecting proprietary data and the need to differentiate. I think that's a super interesting, nuanced um, kind of future to, you know, keep working on together. Because I know one of the things I've learned within the work group is that, man, everyone cares a lot about these landscapes that the trails are on that we use, and, um, and that's been really great. So, yeah, I think those are the interesting places maybe in other sessions this week we can get into, birds of a feather, and uh, yeah. So with that, I think um, any kind of last thing from the panel before we switch into kind of uh, Q&A from the audience? And uh, Just real fast, I hear on in the Wolva app, or however you say it, a uh, few links from the National Park Service where you can get actual data from the Park Service and our mobile apps and developers and, and all that kind of stuff if you're into API development using APIs there's websites to answer that thing. Um, I was also just going to say real quick, you know, a random thought that I had when other folks were talking is that when you're ingesting data, unless you're connected to the live source, it's a snapshot. It, it becomes out of date very quickly. So it, it's kind of like you have to keep looking at the other sources I mean, that's totally different than OpenStreetMap, right? It doesn't just all out of date because it's constantly being updated. But if you're pulling in data from somewhere else, it's a snapshot. So just wanted to throw that out there. Right, I think the, on the only thing that I've been thinking a little bit about that I think this would be interesting to get this community's pulse on at some point is I was talking with the, OR, the Outdoor Recreation Resources Council in D.C. a couple weeks ago, and they were really concerned with, like, like protected moments in trails, right? Um, petroglyphs, for example, I think in DC one. And ways to try to find out how to, uh, they, they use the more the word like hide, but like protect them. And what is that like uniform protected places layer that we all just know and believe in, right? Because it's important that we create a geofence buffer to this and educate people on this moment, right? And what does that look like when we collectively get together? Because to me, that's like not differentiating data. That's just protecting the environment, protecting our history, protecting these archaeological sites. Um, and how do we create that? And is that in an open street map layer that is just like, it's not a POI. This is like literally like a voted on entity of protection. Everything has its own kind of moment of distance that we alert people. We're on our different apps and devices to say, this is what this is. Um, I think it's something we could do big for our our, our outdoor wild places. I think time for questions from the audience. So yeah, Maggie's got I think we had go. someone in the front here that was really eager to ask a question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you broke in. Uh, please been introduce waiting. yourself when you ask a question and then if it's a question, we'll take it. If it's a comment, wait till later, please. So it, it's, uh, I'm Todd. Um, I work for the Department of Interior, so I'm part of this conversation of we. But I'd like the panel, um, it was kind of interesting hearing we's from each of your perspectives. And first, a huge apologies. I was here last year and I made a promise to my friend Maggie that I would champion this work and I've done the best I could, but there is so much more I need to be doing. But I am so grateful to see the progress that's happened over the last year. Um, in this community, there's more new faces, there's more conversations happening. And speaking on behalf of the Department of Interior, I get to be the Chief Data Officer, so I, c I can speak authoritatively about certain things. Um, the Department of Interior, while we may not have assigned official agreements or that, but we are 100% behind this concept of expanding the we, right? The we isn't about USGS, the we isn't just about the Park Service. We the people, that's the we we're shooting for here. And our data is for we the people. So my question to you all is how do we build not the technical challenges, not the legal challenges, but the behavioral challenges we face in the US government of change? Technology changes fast, data changes fast, 
User expectations change fast. Bureaucracies don't. What are your thoughts on how you change that bureaucracy? Who needs to be at the table to make that change happen? Who wants that one first? Um, answer everyone. Thank you. Uh, no, so that that is that is a that is a great question. Um, we get asked, I, or I get asked this a lot, you know, in, in different speaking assignments and, and panels and, and partners that we meet with, um, you know, and and that is one of the reasons why, you know, in our little in our world, uh, you know, with the public lands program one of the key aspects and one that we're seeing being used the most is us sharing that usage data because and, and what we tell partners is we don't care how you use this but you know use it for good use it to you know if you need to use it to change you, you visitor behavior or something like that great if you need to use it to go apply for grants and funding great like we don't care how you use it like use it in your community uh, the way that, that see you see fit. Um, but ultimately, you know, the way we see it and the way, uh, you know, all trails, uh, we feel we have a, a, a responsibility and a place in this is to change the mindset and, and user behavior uh, and, and uh, of, of our users, right? Our goal, we want to turn everybody into a steward. Right, we know there's a lot of new people to recreating, especially in locations that they're not familiar with. Right, there's a lot to know if you're going to visit Moab, and it's your first time visiting Red Rock in the desert. And we have same if you're visiting the Alpine of Colorado or Montana. Right, and it's your first time being above tree line, and you know what are the rules? And what are the best practices? All of that. All trails fills, they play a key role in helping to educate people on that. And, and because of, of the reach we have and, and because of our user base, right? How can we contribute to that? So I think the first step really is reaching the public on protecting these spaces so that we don't lose access, so that we don't, you know, jeopardize the opportunity to continue to explore our public lands, to, to benefit from the many agencies in, in the, the DOI, you know, that are, are have their missions to protect these places and to, ma and to, to manage these places. Um, and, you know, as, as the American public, we benefit greatly from, right? huge, huge, right? And so um, I, thi I think that's part of it. So you know, everybody needs to be a part of this. Again, the private sector, uh, yeah, I mentioned this already, but we have the ability to bring the usage data, uh, you know, to, to build that case. And then it's connecting with the right people in the nonprofit world or in, 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 in government, whether that's local, again, state, federal, um, to help, help build that narrative uh, and with the data and get to the right people and, and it's just a, a combination of all of that um, it's it's gonna be slow you know that's bureaucracy you know and the the private sector is gonna say hey we're doing everything we can why aren't things moving and they get frustrated and, and obviously say all right we're not gonna invest this anymore because we can't change the government and uh, <laughs> that's right I know I know we can't it just see it takes patience. and that that's my role also I, you know, at all trails is I'm the one saying we can like just give us more time, and that's the last thing you want to say to a Silicon Valley executive is give me more time. <laughs> but I'm getting good at it, uh, and, and so, uh, but you know, that that's the that's the only way forward. And and I think that's again I, I'll say this and then I'll I'll shut up and, and pass the mic. But the uh, you know that's the benefit of this community of OSM. And you know all of you, and you know being the convener of, of pulling these uh, of these you know type of discussions together. There's so many people from different backgrounds that, that have that because it does take everybody. Change is really something that we don't always do really well 
um, in the federal government, just from my experience. And it, it doesn't, it's, it's, not, it's not on the level where the people are doing the work. Um, those people are always willing to innovate and move. Um, and the challenges uh, become, you know, maybe the, the further up you go. So I think that one of the most important things is, is having an advocate like Todd um, in the position that he's in at, at DOI. So you have to have, you need to be able to educate um, where you're at in your organization and to educate internally. It's one thing to work externally and we can all get excited and be happy, but to go home and to translate this message to our folks in, in our own organizations and agencies is a, is a whole nother deal. So we all have a responsibility to do that when we leave conferences like this. And then also, and it's so important, and so Todd, you know this, it's so important to have people in leadership that have um, buy-on to what you're doing. And we're lucky to have that at the USGS with Mike Tischler. He is the director of the National Geospatial Program, and he is really, um, he's really on board with looking at some of this. He's very innovative, and so we have that. But there's a little bit of distance between me and Mike, um, <laughs> and so, you know, that, that again, it continues to be one of the challenges, but you have to have the support from um, within your organization, and then it's up to us to go back and to uh, educate as much as we can and advocate where we, from where we are. Um, we have two, two kind of like mottos at, at Onyx, right? Um, the first one, know where you stand. Like it's people want to know where they stand. It's important. It's critical to their to their knowledge being out there. The second is awaken the adventure in everybody, right? Um, and knowing and having the data to do that is important. But I, I think th it's this knowing the data and getting access to this data. And so I'm gonna actually gonna go silver lining on this, right? Where I'm gonna go like actually the National Park Service API. There's a lot of people using it, and it's really good, and it's accurate, and it's fast, and we leverage it, and it's so much better than it was ten years ago, right? Um, I'm gonna I don't think I don't think it's Cortex. What's the name of the uh, the, the, the the color Cortex? Cotrex. Cotrex. Another one uh, where a stand where a, where a group of a state got together and standardized across the state. The a power to have that data leveraging is so fast. It makes us fast, right? Um, and I guess the th the last one I would go with because I see two minutes and I want to make sure Carrie gets a chance here is we operate on quarterly cycles, right? We have board meetings every quarter. We have profit margins investment rounds, all of this, the government operates on election cycles, right? We're never going to align those together, and we probably never should. So therefore, it's we, we understand the government limitations. And I was in, I actually went in our earlier panel prep, I, was, I asked Karen, like, what can I do better for you? I'm asking you for data all the time, but I rarely ever hear you say, listen, private industry, I need this. Maybe it's part of the data, um, oh, you know, the insights program. Maybe, maybe it's something more, I don't know, but it's important that we start to create that, again, data fluidity, request fluidity. What do we need from each other to make sure that we're actually operating in being BFFs? Okay, I'll be, I'll be quick. <laughs> so, from my government perspective and the trails world, which I've been in for a very long time, I think there is a movement happening Government is slow, but there is a movement happening, and and I'll just give an example real fast. I 2018, I guess it was, or maybe 2016, I started an effort to, as Elizabeth had mentioned before, there's the federal trail data standard out there, but it's a paper document, so I started a grassroots effort to make it a template database that people could just grab and go. And because if it's a paper document, people are gonna implement it differently and that's exactly what was happening. So that's a, a internal movement and then we have acts coming down asking for very similar information so we were able to leverage the federal trail schema that we interagency already talked about and leverage that for Mapland purposes. To me, that's a movement, it's happening. We are getting together as you know, different agencies, and it's being pushed from Congress by folks lobbying in Congress, so things are coming down, and and it's 
making a movement happen. So I hopefully things will, you know, get smoother in the government when it comes to recreational data and making that available and easy, easily usable in these apps for and for the public to download the data and take it to use. Great. Well, with that, we're a little past time, so I um, want to thank our panelists for sitting up here, sharing their perspectives, um, answering those questions. So, yeah, thanks, you guys. Maybe r round of applause for them. Thank you, TJ, for braving the moderation of, of such a, they, were, they really argued a lot, didn't they? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We're going to have a 15-minute break, um, and then the other room sessions are going to be open. There's workshops, birds of a feather sessions, um, and other talks will be in the out, uh, Bonneville room. And also, don't forget to go across uh, at lunch at noon. We're going to have food served in the granite ballroom uh, just across the patio. So have a wonderful time. Meet a new person, and thanks so much for coming out to Salt Lake.